So, um, unlike our keynote speaker yesterday, this is not my first time in Zagreb, it's my second time. Um, and I'm also a vegetarian. I know that I'm a great disappointment to all of you, and I apologize for that. Uh, hopefully we can become friends still. <laughs> um, but I'd like to talk to you about uh, elements of modern web applications. So, I'm old school. Okay, so Mosaic. Who has used Mosaic? All right, very few people, wow. Everybody look around. The ones with the hands up, these are your elders. Please treat them with respect. And if they, you know, feel free to gently shake them if they fall asleep during my talk. Gently shake them, okay. Um, but anyway, you know, so I've been doing web dev since about 1996. I remember using Mosaic when Yahoo was the only thing you could do to find what's going on in the web. And, you know, times have changed, right? Uh, my IDE was Notepad. My other tools were Photoshop and FTP. Life was good, right? Till IE came along and sprouted my first gray hairs. Right? Um, so, but things are changed, right? Maybe not IE so much, but a lot of other stuff. So, uh, fast forward to now-ish, the code base that the front-end team and I work on at Reversing Labs started in around 2011 or so, and you know, wasn't today isn't necessarily using the best practices of the day or uh, what we're kind of seeing as common in modern web apps, right? Uh, so this is to check out from that perspective what's new, like just as a user even, not even as a developer, just what do modern web apps look like now? Um, and help that try to inform where to go with a slightly aging code base now. You know, what are we getting? So Reversing Labs is hiring, hint, hint. Uh, and as a team lead, you know, I do a lot of interviews. So um, one of the questions I like to ask is a simple one, at least I thought it was simple, right? which is, what are the elements of a modern web app? Um, and so, it seemed simple until I asked it a few times and realized that not many of us are really thinking about this at a higher level. We think about it at kind of little pieces of stuff. Um, and so the answers to me, you know, they were interesting. My requisite cat pick, now you know it's an internet talk. Um, and they weren't, uh, you know, outlandish or anything like that. I was kind of hoping for some crazy ones because, you know, caveat here is this was during interviews. People had all the time in the world to answer my question. None of them were nervous. None of them had their minds go blank thinking this might be a trick question. Right? But regardless, I got, you know, the usual suspects. You probably see a few up here. Um, I got an array of answers, right? But still, they weren't really at that higher level. They were more technology focused. Um, now, I didn't say ahead of time before I asked the question, uh, am I talking about from the user perspective or am I talking about from the developer perspective? And interestingly, there was only one person that did ask me which perspective I wanted for the answer. Um, but the good news is that most people did kind of answer mostly from the user perspective. Uh, you can see some technologies were thrown out here. I was really expecting like a hashtag soup of technologies thrown at me uh, when I asked this question. But fortunately, it was, it was better than that. There were a few unexpected ones. This was a little interesting one, I thought. Some creative twist. Um, modern, I think we've always been trying to differentiate, right? So I don't know that it really is characteristic of necessarily modern web apps, but it was an interesting answer nonetheless to kind of break out of the technology bit and think creatively there. And then the, the other one that uh, took me a little bit aback is cloud. You know, that was the first answer by one person. Um, and it took me back a little bit because I guess I wasn't really thinking of the cloud as part of modern apps just because it's so pervasive now, right? We have platforms as a service, um, and they're just so present today that I almost didn't even really think about it myself, right? Um, so it was interesting. So let's ask someone else's opinion. Yaman, anybody use Yaman? Yeah, handful of people. Pretty good, right? This is a great dev-centric viewpoint on what are modern web apps. It's the web scaffolding tool for modern web apps. So 
made by a lot of the big industry names, contributors there. So what does it say? Well, as soon as you install the prereqs for a modern web app with Yaman, you're launched into the new era of, meta, of uh, modern web development, right? You have to install, nod, inst install Node and RPM, uh, NPM, sorry, right? After you get through those prerequisites, you install a few more things. Um, the Yaman command line tool itself, the scaffolding tool, Bower for dependencies, uh, grunt and gulp for running tasks for anything from previewing your work to bundling and packaging deployments. One more prerequisite, you know, their uh, built-in generator app, and, uh, and there you go. You run your web app, and bam, instant modern web app. Success. Hashtag profit, right? Well, so what did you get when you did this? This is what they consider to be the, the simplest modern web app. These are the elements that they consider to be the heart of that. HTML5 boiler, uh, boilerplate and bootstrap, interestingly, they're both there. So now you're ar already thrown into a question, why do I need both? Which one's better, right? Um, jQuery, I know that's a dirty word now, but it's there. Um, SAS, modernizer, and grunt tasks. Um, you know, so we can kind of take these a, a little bit deeper a little bit later. But that's, that's what Yaman says from the dev point of view. So what does Josh say? Well, I say let's bump out of, we, we got a little ahead of ourselves there getting down into the dev part, right? Let's bump out a little bit and go up a little bit higher. So I'll kind of walk through, just from my viewpoint, looking at this, what do I see out there? Um, and the first component or element of modern web apps, I would say, is speed, right? Is it modern? Probably not. We've always kind of had that as a goal, to be fast, I would say. Um, but today, everything's so fast uh, that you, and the tool set has become so good to this point that it's sort of built in to be fast. If you're adhering to kind of the common practices today, right, um, then you get that speed um, built in for you a bit. And by that, I'm kind of talking about minification, bundling, compression, those kinds of things are just you know, kind of natural now when you're building new web apps. Um, caching and CDNs, you know, those are kind of boring and stuff. They're in the background, but, you know, it wasn't that long ago where those weren't that prevalent, right? Now, it's just kind of common practice, and that's really kind of where the cloud comes in and helps you out to scale. So speed, really important. Multi-device, it's probably a term you're thinking of when I throw this up, right? Say it with me, responsive design, yes. Ah, but it's not just responsive design, right? There's adaptive design, too. There's probably other words we could throw at it, or design approaches. Here's Mozilla's take on what these things mean, right? Responsive, so it, in a nutshell, responsive is you know, a single design that's fluid, kind of works on across multiple uh, situations, resolutions, devices. Adaptive is more progressive, so you try to attempt to know what you're being viewed on first and serve up the right thing. Um, they're kind of trying to do the same thing, but they're different approaches. And so that's why I went with multi-device here, right? Because it's not just responsive. It's thinking in terms of you're running on tons of different devices now. And don't forget the other parts of the world where they're running on really crappy devices, right? Really bad networks. Um, but likewise, the flip side of that is don't forget the people that have big, beautiful resolution, big screens that are seeing your tiny little nice mobile-friendly site, but you forgot to think about them, too. Um, but certainly a part of modern web apps, right? Multi-device, big part. Clean design. Simple, flat, spacious. No? Not so modern? All right, start over. So, just as I'm not a designer, let me just say that up front. This is my perspective on the design world, uh, a little bit of what I see out there, but you can all see this, right? Big, big graphics, custom typography, flat designs, spacious, simple. Um, I know the big, Im big image trend, jumbotrons, uh, hero images, whatever you want to call them, is a little controversial. You know, it can kind of be a double-edged sword, but it's certainly a trend. It's certainly a part of the modern web app world, right? We see it all over the place. Um, you know, it's certainly better than I would say that first site I, sh I showed, right? They've improved it, looks a lot more slick. 
But even to the app side of things, it's still trying to condense information down and have a simpler, cleaner approach. Last one on that, Asana, you know, here's a, their website and their app, both seamless kind of spacious UI. So here's like my little bullet points on what I see out there from the design perspective, right? Interactive. So modern sites, you know, the HTML is no longer really the thing, right? So I propose interactive is a long, a term that's been around a long time. I, I propose we bump that up a level and call it alive instead of just interactive, okay? Like, websites respond to you. You know, everything expands and, and appears and disappears. Navigation now is there when you need it. It's gone when you don't. Gets out of your way. There's all sorts of different little interactions. Hamburger menus. Everybody a big fan of hamburger menus, right? You click on those, it changes to an action. You click on it again, it zips back. Form elements change and adapt to you. There's motion all over the place, um, good or bad. Uh, video playing right when you scroll to it. Video in the background, a lot, of, a lot of just feeling of aliveness in pages. Immersive, this is kind of becoming more and more of a trend that I'm seeing. Things like Facebook and YouTube, they're doing immersive ads and trying to do uh, you know, immersive video. And anybody see the latest video ads that Facebook was doing? You can tilt your, your uh, mobile device and it tilts the video with you and that kind of stuff. Uh, and you know, WebGL is here, right? It's just something you can actually use. D3, you get beautiful, um, beautiful visualizations. 3D, dare I say, might actually become a real thing. Or some would say it is a real thing now. And they're fresh. This kind of covers the CMS parts, uh, social media integration, live feeds on your websites. It all gives that sense of this thing's alive. And lastly, this touches a little on the dev side, continuous. So you've heard some talks around here to, uh, yesterday about deployments. You know, people are pushing right to production multiple times a day just from check-ins. Seems a little, makes me a little nervous, you know? I never would have done that years ago, but, you know, it's here. It's, it's viable. Things like Jenkins, Travis, there's this technology now in our tool set that makes all this kind of possible to keep things alive. It's all about the same thing, and that's why I put it under this umbrella. Um, stable. This is one of the things that was kind of missed um, in my talks to people about this topic a bit. No obvious bugs. Um, this gets into the testing side of things, right? Testing's a big thing. Uh, now, as far as like a mantra, TDD, BDD, all this stuff, right? Um, we have a lot in our tool set to be able to reduce what users are experiencing for trouble. Linters, right? Um, for all different kinds of languages are there. To catch stuff, catch your silly stuff before it even run, your code even runs, right? And you have, like I mentioned before, the continuous integration servers running your test suites um, and making sure that everything's good before you push it anywhere. Uh, incompatibility issues, they didn't go away, but I'd say we're way better at it now than we used to be, right? We have modernizer and feature detection and things like that, where before, you, you might remember, and I was probably guilty of this back in the day at least, uh, saying, uh, this site only works on, you know, this particular browser, so go get the other one, you know, go get this browser, don't use the one you're using. Horrible experience, we're, we're past that fortunately, which is great. And then the other part is outages, right? Users aren't really expecting you to go down if someone Reddit posts your website, uh, though they delight when you do. Um, and this is where the cloud comes in again, right? You have Amazon and Microsoft and Google allowing you to just turn a, turn a dial, right, and spin up servers and, and handle the demand when it all of a sudden hits you like that because your, your little web app just took off. Okay, it's not that simple, but you, you get my point, right? The tools and, and techniques are there to allow you to scale and handle this uh, much more gracefully than it used to be. So, I am with a cybersecurity company. You probably didn't think I wouldn't mention this. Um, secure, I put a question mark here because it almost feels like this has gone the other way. Um, you know, with all the news headlines, you can't get away from it. Security feels like a mess, right? But I actually think that we have gotten better. I think it's more to do with a couple of things like um, 
the security landscape has changed. Attackers are more sophisticated. They're more plentiful. Um, you know, and but I think in general the awareness of the basic mistakes that we used to make, you know, like injection attacks, cross-site scripting, all that stuff, we know about now and we address. So, double-edged sword. Uh, you even have things like this, let's encrypt. Automated way to get HTTPS in your app. You have uh, people like Google pushing better certs by throwing up warnings in the browser to the user, hey, this SH, uh, the SHA-1 certificate is maybe not as secure as it could be. So you're getting kind of forced to even be better. So I would say, yes, security is a part of modern web apps because you need it to be. A few quick tips. Um, open Web App Security Project, top 10, gives you the basic bullet points on what you should be doing. Keep all your things updated. I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here, I hope. Um, and if you don't have someone testing your stuff, do it. Like, if you're at a point where you can't, when you can afford it or if you don't have anyone internally, have someone try to break into your stuff. Find out where the warts are, right? Um, it's there for you. Don't be the next Ashley Madison, Target, Uber, Sony. You, you get the point. Everybody's vulnerable these days. So there it is. That's my list from the user perspective, okay? Um, take it or leave it. It's just my perspective, but um, that's what I'm seeing out there. There are two more things, though, I would say, that sit squarely in the developer space, not really in the user space, that I think are worth calling out separately. Um, so I'll do that now. Uh, modularize all the things, right? Modules, modules, modules. So pages, single pageness. I, I don't like the term single page application, so I will kind of use something similar. But pages are more modular themselves, right? You just load the basic structure of the first request. From then on, you're just refreshing the things that you need to, no full page loads, that kind of stuff. That's what I mean by kind of modularness there. The, this lead, leads into widgets and web components and things like that where you have custom elements. I want to drop a map widget or a, a calendar widget, and I want to use it across multiple projects. Open source versions of these things, Polymer, stuff like that, right? All making all of this a bit more modular. JavaScript, uh, definitely different from 10 years ago, right? Uh, way more modular. It's built into the language now. ECMAScript 2015, which I know you're all using that word for ES6, right? Um, that's what I'm talking about here. Um, things like common JS and required JS made this really popular, uh, and, but now it's built in. And you get a lot of uh, developer productivity and a lot more efficiency and speed that's all beneficial to the user, keeping things alive. It all rolls up to those topics that I mentioned before. CSS, same sort of thing. We have preprocessors handling um, browser vendor prefixes and the mess of that, keeping your CSS way more organized with SAS and less. Um, and all of this rolls up to better developer productivity, um, you know, speed and aliveness in your apps. And uh, it's one of my favorite modular things, right? You can become a fierce fighting machine from the 80s if you're modular. Voltron fans, anybody? Yes, my people. Frameworks, last one. So, I couldn't really get away without talking about frameworks, right? That's kind of a biggie. Uh, it's not going to be comprehensive. I'm just going to talk a, a little bit about it. I won't go too deep, but they're abound, right? You basically, I don't know of a web app or talking to anybody that isn't using a framework of some sort now. Um, Bootstrap, HTML5, Boiler Template, Foundation, those are kind of the higher level ones. They don't get you quite all you need, but they're, they're the basics, right? MV star from there. It's hard to kind of start breaking things out, but here's a, just a starting list. Go to to-do MVC, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that, and you can see the laundry list of frameworks that are out there. I'm sure there's one added every minute. Probably one just got added now. Um, but the biggies are there, Angular, Ember, React, right? Those are kind of the, the ones that everybody's interested in now. Uh, and it's good. It's good for us, good for productivity. It can be hard to make sense of it all. I find my head swirling. Hopefully I'm not alone there, but um, but that's also why, you know, I wanted to, to raise this issue up a little bit higher because, you know, that thinking of it from the user perspective and thinking of it from what you're seeing out there and how it benefits us can help, I think, when you're looking at these new technologies and these shiny toys uh, and trying to figure out, uh, you know, what to use and what to take advantage of and not get caught up in the tech. Um, 
why do we care? Josh, thank you for boring us for 20 minutes. Well, I, it's, it's, it's this bigger picture, right? You want to see things from not just down into the, oh, I need HTML5 because it's the thing I need to use. Um, I can't tell you how many people I've asked, what does HTML5 mean to you who have it on their CV and can't answer that question. So think about it at a higher level. How is it benefiting you? Do you really need it? Do you need a task runner? Maybe you don't. Think about the user experience there, right? Um, that's why I care. Vala, thank you. So we have a couple minutes for questions. Is there anyone? Just raise your hand if you have any questions. Be kind. I'll bring you a microphone. Uh, hey. hey. So what's your opinion from maybe a security uh, standpoint about JSON web tokens? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch it. From security? Uh, uh, endpoint view. Security endpoint? Yeah, about JSON web tokens. Oh, JSON Web Tokens. Yeah, is that what you said? Yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, what's my view on JSON Web Tokens? I'm not an expert on them. Uh, not using them currently myself. I've read a bit about them. Um, so I, I wouldn't do it justice to really give you a great answer on that. So I'm going to kind of take the easy way on this one. <laughs> um, I apologize. But um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to leave that one there. Sorry. 